Welcome to Transform Now, a podcast focused on intelligent automation and brought to you by SSNC Blue Prism. On this program, we talk about how organizations globally are rethinking the way they operate, utilizing process orchestration and AI-enabled digital workers to free up humans to do the work that matters most. We also share insights and tips on how you can embrace this new way of working and unleash your full potential. Let's get into the show. Hello, everyone. I'm Brad Hairston with SSNC Blue Prism. Welcome to the Transform Now podcast. Today, I'm excited to have a Blue Prism customer joining me all the way from Stockholm, Sweden. Girish Pai, Technology Portfolio Director at Ericsson, a global leader in communications technology, including hardware, software, and services. Girish, welcome. Why don't you start us off with an introduction? Thank you, Brad. Thank you for having me. My name is Girish Pai, and I work as a technology portfolio director in Ericsson, responsible for hyper automation technologies. I specialize in delivering organizational change and transformation to uh, drive cost optimization, process improvements, and enhance productivity improvements and end user experience. My career has been very much focused in driving large scale digital transformation initiatives supported by robotic process automation and artificial intelligence initiatives. Again, thank you very much for having me, Brad. You bet. It's great to have you here. And Girish, from your profile, it it appears that you've been involved with intelligent automation for well over 15 years. Is that accurate? Very accurate. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty amazing. Could you talk about how you first got into automation? Is there a story there that you could uh, (laughs) share? Well, let's say a journey of 1,000 miles starts with a single step. I got an opportunity to work with automation and AI where I was a part of a center of excellence much, much earlier than even before the concept of robotic process automation was coined. The the interesting part is uh, given the fact that the opportunity presented me to deliver upon some really cool and nice automations for some enterprise customers where I was consenting with, and that helped me forge a career into automation and AI. It has been an interesting journey since. No doubt about that. It's been an interesting journey for all of us, for sure. So, Giris, why don't we start our conversation today with Ericsson's automation journey? Could you tell us how and where things started with automation and where it has evolved to today? So, we started from scratch in our enterprise automation and AI journey in 2016. At the very beginning, we followed a mantra. Think big, start small, scale quick. This terminology we use internally was to set a kind of a course for radical transformation driven by exponential technologies. During the first two years in 2016-17, we had six initiatives that we had driven business funded and delivered as per expectations. 2018 was the year of developing an enterprise grade platform to industrialize robotic process automation and other foundational products. 2019-20 were growth years to increase and scale our footprint in automation and AI, where several solutions were built on our enterprise grade platforms. 2020 and 22 were the years where we introduced citizen development through automation and AI, democratization, and developed an ecosystem towards our hyper automation cloud first platforms. Fast forward to mid 2023, where we are on an exponential scale in nature, and one of the many ingredients for the success, right? has been an, a unique ability to measure and quantify the value for each initiative. Our internal stakeholder demand, uh, which is the amount that business units fund, has increased significantly since 2016 when we launched our team. Right? So essentially, we've been fairly successful to execute our AI-led enterprise transformation for several years and recently named as one of the leaders in the 2023 Gartner Hyper Automation 100 Club. Wow, that's a terrific honor. Girish, you mentioned your stakeholder engagement has really increased over time. Could you go back to the beginning and just touch on where your original sponsorship for automation came from? Was that from IT or was there a business team that really started the process? Yes, absolutely, Brad. I think one of our sponsors to sort of with were driven through internal business organizations. Uh, and these internal business organizations 
the proof of concept slash pilots that we did with them were very much value focused. So what we did was we just did not do a proofing of technology. We actually showed an outcome of how we could drive radical cost avoidance through those initial POCs and pilots, which led an attention into robotic process automation back in 2016-17. And that has kind of curated an outcome-based approach that we take in driving automation and AI. And that confidence built up within business by showcasing value has helped us since. Focusing on outcomes. I love it. So, Girish, what areas of the company have you guys automated the most? So, uh, a good amount of automation has been implemented in areas of group supply, group finance, enterprise IT, and managed services. Are there areas of the company that have not really util utilized automation as much and that are targets for you and your team? Could you speak to that as well? Yes, Brian. I think, in fact, most of the areas in Ericsson right now are, are driven in, in full speed in automation and AI. However, we believe that there are some high growth potential areas like sales and marketing sourcing, where there is a very good potential of growth. Okay. Gitters, you mentioned a minute ago that one of your success factors has been the, the way that you quantify value, the way you communicate that to the organization. Could, could you expand on that, on how you measure and communicate automation benefits at Ericsson? Automation benefits are measured and communicated through what we call as a value resolution methodology that we've improvised over years of experience in automation and AI at Ericsson. So the first step in this process is to estimate a top-down automation potential in business organizations using our automation and AI toolbox or foundation products. Once this step is done, then the next step involves identifying the total potential of automation formed through what we call as automation and AI assessment of driving discovery outcomes through formalization of business cases, right? Now that the formalization of business cases is done, we step into the third step. The third step involves business committing to funding the automations that they have signed up in the business case mm -hmm. and IT developing the automations and deploying them into production. These business cases are signed off by the relevant business teams, gaining their commitment and trust in the said transformation, right? Now, mm -hmm. because it is a joint responsibility between business and IT, we together co-own the business case and the business drives the ownership of realizing the value. In this way, we engage a co-accountability of automations between business and IT, right? The fourth step involves IT implementing the automations and deploying them into production, right? Now, here, the outcome value is assessed for automations over a particular period of time and is reported as what we call as enabled value. This enabled value is reported back to the business and a retrospective is performed on the enable value in comparison to the signed off business case. Mm -hmm. This is a very important step because we try to learn towards deviations if there are any as part of a retrospective. And this is retrospective is a joint retrospective. The last step involves business driving realization of the value based upon the value enabled through automation and reporting the same to their respective leadership teams. So this is the overall methodology that we typically have coined in through. And this has been helping us driving and very effective transformation-led drive within Ericsson. Wow, Girish, that is a really interesting approach. I appreciate you walking us through that. And I love the co-accountability that you described between the business and IT in terms of not just defining, but achieving the value that everyone really wants to achieve. Gears, you mentioned several really great benefits and outcomes from automation. And sometimes cost reduction, cost avoidance gets overemphasized. I wonder if you could just talk a little bit more about how automation is factoring into growth and customer engagement strategies across Ericsson. We've seen a positive impact of uh, intelligent automation factor into our growth and consequently in our customer engagement strategies. Brand. Some of the dimensions to mention in this particular context is uh, obviously operational efficiency. 
So we've seen intelligent automation, including robotic process automation and artificial intelligence, enable us to automate repetitive and rule-based tasks. This has allowed our employees to focus on more strategic and complex activities, uh, leading to increased operational efficiency. The second point is obviously cost avoidance. So automation in certain areas has proven to drive cost savings by driving cost avoidance and minimizing errors. Because automation processes operate 24 by 7 without the need for breaks, leading to increased business productivity and drive a positive impact on insourcing processes through robotic process automation, infusing them with AI has helped us drive better decision making towards how rules are executed through robotic process automation. Now, the third interesting point and quite an important point for us is scalability. So, the automations mm -hmm. that we develop are enabling scale in our operations more easily. Our automation processes can handle increased loads without a linear increase in cost, providing scalability, which is extremely crucial for accommodating business growth. This mm -hmm. adaptability of being able to increase or decrease the number of bots during a varied workload in a year has helped us significantly drive scale in business and manage resilience in operations. So at times you might see that bots perform activities quite high during the high load period. And probably during the vacation period, you might not see that business operation is working too much. So the introduction of a concept called digital workforce has helped us automatically improvise a scalability with it, intelligent information. The next parameter is about driving improved accuracy, which means because automations reduce the likelihood of human errors in routine mm -hmm. tasks. Now, we directly see an improved accuracy and high quality outputs, which has a positive impact on quality. Right. All of these at the end uh, drive and enhance customer experience because intelligent automation applied to customer service, chatbots, and other areas have showcased seamless and a very efficient customer experience. With routine tasks automated, employees can now focus on creative and innovative aspects of their work which has fostered a culture of innovation within the company, leading to the development of new products and services that uh, help us contribute to our growth. Uh, and obviously, faster time to market plays also a very important point of view because automated processes enable us to accelerate product development. This agility is particularly important in fast-paced industry like ours. Hmm. So going back to your stakeholders, you've, you've brought them up several times. How do you keep the business operations stakeholders engaged and keep that pipeline growing with the right automation opportunities? So keeping business operation stakeholders engaged and, and uncovering new automation opportunities involves a combination of communication, collaboration, and a proactive approach. Some of the strategies we adopted to achieve our goals, for example, where we established a clear communication channel. Right? So we fostered uh, open communication channels between IT and business operations team through scheduling regular meetings, having workshops, or for example, having forums to discuss ongoing automation projects. We also gathered a lot of feedback uh, through regular retrospectives post go live, keeping business teams in sync. We also involved stakeholders from the beginning. So including key stakeholders from business operations and IT in early stages of automation projects helped us ensure their perspectives were considered. Conducting workshops or uh, let's say brainstorming sessions to identify pain points and potential areas for automation helped us steer the solution mindset towards their points. We drew a lot of automation guidance and what we call as education of automation in our stakeholders. Mm -hmm. So we provided training programs, workshops to educate business operations stakeholders about benefits of operations and its impact. Clearly communicating how automation aligns uh, with an overall business strategy and objective helped us enable business confidence. We also showcased a lot of uh, success stories. So highlighting successful automation projects and the positive impact on business operations that right, helped us gain confidence and trust of automations implemented in the business teams. Success stories that we demonstrated were demonstrated with actual tangible benefits, like for example, time savings, cost avoidance and improved accuracy, which kind of helped us gain business commitments. We encouraged a lot of feedback 
and and mm-hmm. and we actively seek feedback from business operations team about their pain points and areas where automation could be beneficial. Creating a feedback loop to continuously improve and refine automated processes help scale, build more business rules into all existing automations as such. And honestly, we aligned our intelligent automation with business goals. We ensured that automation initiatives are aligned with broader business goals and objectives. We strive to make it a regular to clearly communicate how automation contributes to key performance indicators and help drive business success. Last but not the least, we stayed agile and responsive to ever-changing business needs. And we regularly reassessed automation priorities based upon evolving business requirements. So in short, by driving these strategies, we were able to create an environment that not only engages business operations stakeholders in automation, but also fosters a very collaborative and proactive approach to uncovering new opportunities for improvement. Wow, that's really impressive. That's a very comprehensive approach uh, to keeping the business connected to you and bringing those opportunities to you. I think clearly that's been beneficial to your program and the growth that you have. So Gidrish, I'd love to hear about any intelligent skills that you have brought in to augment the digital workers so you can do more complex automation. Can you speak to that? Absolutely, Brian. I think the most important part for us to scale our journey in automation and AI has been the digital workforce. So we have enabled intelligent automation to our digital workforce spanning from, let's say, process mining, OCR, machine learning, robotic process automation has been one of our pivotal uh, journeys. Plus, I combine that with local blockchain and others. So all of these capabilities have allowed us to view an ecosystem to drive end-to-end hyper-automation, solving larger business challenges. Awesome. So let's talk about generative AI, which is the hot topic of the day. Um, I would love to hear where you and your program envision that that will make the biggest difference at Ericsson. Generative AI has by far taken the world by storm. I mean, the opportunities that it can create go far beyond intelligent chatbots. And we realize that. I mean, there are a wide range of applications already emerging for generative AI in the telecom industry, in mobile networks and beyond. So in telecom, I believe, generative AI will play a role in driving opportunities in the generation of content from text-based documentation, right? software implementation support software code reviews, and much, much, much more than beyond intelligent chatbots. So I I think we are already in the future right now, Brad. (laughs) We are definitely there. We can't say the future of work anymore. Everything is moving so quickly. It's exciting to see how that can become another skill that digital workers tap into, and I'm definitely seeing a lot of activity there. So, Agirish, what advice would you give to organizations that are trying to scale their automation capability across the enterprise. What are some key lessons you have learned that you would be willing to share? So I think scaling automation capabilities across an enterprise is a significant undertaking that requires careful planning, collaboration, and a strategic approach. So in my recommendation, the first advice is to develop a clear automation strategy. Think big, start small, and scale quick. Start with a small POC or a pilot with tangible outcomes to the business. This is very critical to showcase initial value. Scale your implemented solutions with more volume to add to an incremental value, right? So once you're done with this step where you showcased initial value with tangible outcomes, the next is to drive implementation of products with a problem-solving mindset. Avoid fitting tools to a problem. Identification of problems is opportunities and driving solutions of those with a problem-solving mindset is the way to go. I personally recommend companies to choose automation and AI tools that align with your organization needs and objectives. So driving innovation and choosing the right products that suits your organization is the more beneficial factor than trying to fit a particular tool. Mm -hmm. Uh, Another recommendation is to collaborate across departments. Change management is very, very crucial. Also, identify and prioritize processes that are well suited for automation and choose those particular solutions that provide a significant business value. 
consider factors like complexity, frequency, and impact on key performance indicators by choosing automations and prioritizing them. Invest a lot in employed feeling. Mm. The control democratization of automation, which allows driving the power of automation through employees, through citizen development, I personally believe is got to be the future. We also have learned, and I personally believe that prioritizing security considerations in automation implementations to protect sensitive data and maintaining compliance is extremely essential. Platforms enabled with security by design and compliance help scale automations, maintaining a good compliance posture towards the solutions that are developed on them, right? Mm -hmm. Regularly measure and monitor value. Define key performance indicators to measure the success of automation initiatives and perform regular retrospective. Implementing monitoring and reporting mechanisms to track performance, efficiency, and impact of automated processes will help business value and drive trust in scaling automations. So these are some of my learnings. Right? Great advice for programs to, to heed. Thank you for sharing all that. I think you guys have a fairly heterogeneous automation environment. I mean, yes. you're, you're, you have a lot of different technologies you're using. Blue Prism is just one of those. How do you determine which platform to use when an automation opportunity comes up? Organizations need to uh, drive identification of tools that mm -hmm. fit their domain and fit mm -hmm. their organization needs. We've done exactly the same. I mean, we've gone with a very clear problem-solving mindset to identify uh, how to solve a particular problem, a business problem within Alex. Mm -hmm. and, and doing so, we were able to create this fantastic, what we call this automation and AI toolbox, which has transformed over the years into what we call this enterprise AI yeah. engine. What we are successful in doing at this given point in time is to weave all these products together. Mm -hmm. uh, so that tomorrow if we find an opportunity where we have to do OCO and RPA. This one platform that we've weaved called this Enterprise AI Engine can support the end-to-end -end story of solving and driving automation. It might be within the same business unit or it might go across business units. So Girish, uh, last question for you. Why don't you tell us what's next for your automation program? I think a lot more, Brad. We're looking at a near future where a generative AI infused with automation will play a pivotal role in enabling growth of our automation program. Controlled democratization of automation products will bring business closer to utilize automation solutions, scaling the use of automation products. Well said. Girish, it's been great having some time with you on our podcast today. I really appreciate you joining and, and sharing your thoughts and your, your lessons learned. I know our listeners will appreciate it. So thank you for being here and I wish you the best. Thank you very much for having me, Brian. Thank you for listening to Transform Now, the podcast from SSNC Blue Prism. You can find all of our episodes on your favorite podcast channel, as well as YouTube. To stay on top of the hottest topics in the world of intelligent automation, subscribe now. The future of work is here.